Hey, everyone. Good to see so many people here tonight. That's awesome. Um, I'm going to preface this all by saying two things. First, I'm not a Docker expert by any means. So I can answer questions about what I'm doing here. But if you have technical Docker questions, I may stumble and deflect those to later. Um, and yeah, the other thing, too, is that, like I said, this is all going to be live coding and things like that. So please bear with me. I've been able to do it at home in five to 10 minutes. So I hope I can get through all of it tonight. Uh, and yeah, let's get started. So basically what I'm here to talk to people about in general is there's some new tools in Visual Studio Code for working with Docker and containerized development environments. Uh, I'm really interested in those for two reasons. Uh, for one, I'm a contractor and it feels like all of my contracts right now have totally different software stacks. And I got sick of installing you know, MySQL and Postgres and all of these different versions of Ruby and Node and things like that onto my main laptop. So I've been looking at different ways that I can kind of containerize and use something like Docker uh, to manage my development environment. The other thing too is I have been jumping back and forth between a bunch of different computers. And uh, I recently broke my laptop, the logic, or the, uh, logic card went. So I'm boring Ian's laptop tonight. Um, but this is going to be a good demonstration of one of the nice things about it, which is how easy it is to use these containerized environments to go from one computer to another. So before I get too carried away, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually go and kind of show you the end product and then show you how I got there. So is everyone generally familiar with Visual Studio Code? You've seen it before. It's an IDE. It's nothing too crazy. Um, one of the cool things is once we've set it up to work with these containers, whenever you open a project that supports them and has been configured, you'll see a little button down here that says reopen this project in a container. So I'm going to leave that, let it to run for a second. And what it's doing is it's actually spinning up a Docker container, uh, loads it from the image, creates it, um, and then throws in uh, just a couple little tools that it needs so that it can talk to that container from Visual Studio and so that any add-ons you're using in Visual Studio that have to be installed inside the container to work get installed. So at this point, um, it looks almost exactly like how it would be running locally. But the cool thing is nothing in this environment has to be set up locally. I could be running you know, my databases. I could have a specific version of Ruby or Node, whatever it is, and it'll be set up in here. Uh, the other cool thing, too, is that I can go and run a server here. And so now it's listening on port 3000. But if I jump over to my local box and refresh, there we go. It's almost just like I was developing locally. It's just forwarding the port between the container um, and your local environment. So out of the box, it's really that simple. There's not a lot you have to do. But the part that I'm going to walk you through now is starting from a from scratch project, how I set that up so that you guys will be able to do it yourself if you would like to. So I'm going to open a new window. Um, I'm going to, so I've just set up a blank folder. There's nothing in it right now. I'll close the welcome message. Um, and what I'll do is I'll npm init. I'm just going to accept all the defaults here. You would probably actually want to fill these out. That's OK. And then because we're using Express, I'm going to install Express and save it as a dependency. So that's going. Um, and while that's running, I'm going to create a new file here. And because I don't want to make you watch me type and make all sorts of mistakes, I'm just going to copy it over here. And we'll save this as app.js, save. OK, so at this point, uh, oh, that's OK. Uh, at this point, I'm running off of Ian's computer, and I haven't set anything up. But you can see that I am actually running Node again locally. Um, this is running on his computer rather than a container. Uh, control C. Sorry, I'm not used to the MacBook keyboard, the new ones. Uh, and I'm just going to go back here now. I'll close the old one. And just make sure it's reopen locally. Okay, so the old file, the old stuff is gone. So now we have a normal project. This is a Node application. It's all running on the laptop, but it's not in a container. So the cool part is it's so easy to set up a container. You just go, um, I've taken uh, the liberty of installing a, speci a special add-on. So if I can get my escape key back, there we go. So in here, in the add-ons, this is a new one um, called Remote Development. Uh, it's down here. So it's, here, I'll hide that. There we go. 
So it's in uh, beta right now, basically. It's just an early preview version. Uh, but it provides a couple things. It goes and handles creating the containers, uh, but it also works with SSH and uh, WSL, which is the, the kind of Linux subsystem on Windows, too. So this provides a bunch of commands, and one of them that we're going to use here right now is it comes with um, a bunch of configuration files for different kind of pre-configured environments. And these are just GitHub repos. So you can actually go and as a company, you could set one of these up, for example, um, or you could create them and just share them with people, things like that. And in this case, I am going to use the node latest one right here because hopefully everything has now been downloaded and is ready to go. And I will reopen a container and let this spin up for a minute just to show you guys what it's doing. So down here, uh, it's gone. It's because I already downloaded and set up the container in advance. It's downloaded the images and stuff like that it, it needs to run the container. Uh, it spins up the container, and then you can see all this text flying by. Is it installing into the container the uh, different kind of add-ons and stuff that it needs so that Visual Studio can communicate? And in a few seconds here, yeah, as soon as you see these messages, um, when it's got a management uh, and an extension host connection, it's running. So there's now a container running for this application. Uh, you can go and open a new shell, and in here, you can see the node version. And um, if I do node app.js, it's going to spin it up and run. But the one kind of gotcha that I had is right here, if you look, um, you can see when I try to connect to port 3000, it's not going to work. So there's a couple configuration files that manage um, how everything works. And the main one that we're going to look at is this dev container.json. Let me make this a bit bigger. Um, one second. OK. So in here, this is basically uh, the custom Visual Studio code file that describes what image to use, how to create the container, and stuff like that. And one of the lines down here, you can just go and expose <laughs> ports that would map from your local container or your local box to the container. The other thing you can do too that's handy is have a post create command. So for our app, normally we would have to go and if we're setting this up after checking it out, we might have to run npm install. So you can just tell it to do that when you first spin up the environment. Now, if I've done this right, I'll make sure that that port is open. Um, and, oh, okay, this is the part where the live coding comes in. One second. Mm, save that. Note local. Okay, I'm going to switch back to local and try opening it again. So now that I've added those files, you can see that we're seeing this little prompter to reopen it in the container. And when it comes back up, fingers crossed, that port will be mapped, and I will be able to do what I was doing before. So let's check remote port. Mm. What am I doing wrong? Um, this is one useful command too. You can hit rebuild container and it ba basically goes and sets up the container again. It'll just take a second to run. Um, while it's doing that, I had a couple notes here about things I wanted to mention. Um, at this point, we have everything set up. Um, yeah, so one of the other scenarios that I haven't used very much myself, I've mostly focused on using the containers for my development, but you can also set this up with SSH. So you could have for example, something running where you had your development box in the cloud somewhere, like on DigitalOcean or Google or wherever. And then you could go and it would SSH into that. So all of the actual processing and the hosting would happen on this instance somewhere else. And basically Visual Studio would just acts as a dumb terminal, but it has the, um, the extra support for all the add-ons and stuff like that in Visual Studio, which can be quite nice sometimes. Okay, so Hopefully, this will now do my port properly. Yeah, okay, there we go. So, if I come back over here. Oh, come on. Oh, I have to actually run the server now. Mm. Node 
app js. Okay. So now if I reload, there we go. So we've just completely from scratch built a node app, built a container to manage it, and we're able to go and do all that while still having access to the local ports. Um, a couple other things I want to quickly show. Uh, I know there's a lot kind of here, but um, if we come down here and get rid of that. Um, so right now, there's a couple different ways that you can set it up to work. The dev container right now is set up to build from a Docker file and the project as well, which can be nice, especially when you're first setting the project up and maybe you want to tweak the environment. Uh, but you can also just go and set it to um, use an image that you have on Docker Hub or somewhere like that. So if you were maybe a bigger team and you wanted to have like a standard development image that everyone was using, you could do it that way too. Uh, so there's you know pros and cons to having a Docker file in your project versus using an image that's hosted somewhere else. But like you can see, it's, it's a pretty standard Docker file. You come in and uh, this is where, like if you um, use something like, I use Tmux, for example, I would install Tmux here. Maybe sometimes you want to go and use Vim and things like that. You would throw those in here. And just remembering that this is not the image for your application that you're shipping. This is an image for the development environment that you're using for developing it. So yeah. I think it worked. The, the live coding went well, and um, we've set up a containerized environment. So were there any questions about that or anything about why this is kind of so cool and exciting? Does everybody know what Docker is? I guess I never really asked. <laughs> OK, who doesn't know what Docker is? Because I'll attempt to explain it in like the least technical way possible. OK, I know there was a few people who wanted to know. It, basically, it lets you run. It, like, there are these things called virtual machines, and they let you go and basically run one computer on top of another. Docker, it's not exactly like a lightweight um, virtual machine, but for what we're doing, you can basically think of it like that. It lets you go and run like Ubuntu on Mac or something like that with a standard set of you know, files and things that you could then use on a server somewhere else. So it's, um, it's a nice way to kind of basically have a separate environment from what's running on your computer that you can just use for development or for playing and things like that. And unlike virtual machines, which you know take two minutes to spin up and turn off, a Docker container will start up in like a couple seconds. So it's a bit faster and easier to use and stuff. There are some other gotchas and stuff, but yeah, that's basically all you need to know for this demo. When you said build a container, you mm -hmm. mean build a container, not build a Right, exactly. And actually, if you go, um, when it first starts up there, there's like a little details link that when you click it, um, if you haven't, don't have like the cached uh, images and stuff like that from the Docker file, you'll see it, it goes through and it basically just tells Docker to build whatever's in the Docker file. And then it looks like after that, it runs its commands without using Docker. Like it didn't look like it was using Docker exec on a container or anything. Um, but it does look like it caches that somewhere somehow because definitely like starting it up, once it's created that container once, I noticed changing the, um, the dev container.json, for example, or the Docker file, I would have to rebuild, um, but that it did start up much faster and it didn't seem to have to install all its extra tools and stuff every time. So like normally it would be less than 10 seconds um, between me opening Visual Studio Code and the container being running and I can develop in it. So actually I can show you that really quickly if you want. If I go, so I've got it running right now. Um, so I've quit Visual Studio Code. And let's see if it remembers when I come back in. And okay, so you can see it's setting up the dev container right there. And it's done. So so it's pretty fast. Like it's I don't know, it seems to work pretty well. So I've been very happy with it so far. I've used it for three projects um, that had a lot of dependencies and, and stuff. And I was just setting up a new machine and I did not want to install Postgres and MySQL and like multiple versions of Ruby again. So I tried this and it's worked pretty well. I haven't tried it on Windows, but I imagine it would be similar to running Docker on Windows. Um, there's definitely are some of those gotchas of running Docker on Mac. Like you can see up here, I, I, you have to have Docker installed and running. It's just using Docker desktop. So anyone who's used that knows that there are some gotchas in terms of managing the files and stuff uh, and some of the performance things. But even those seem like they've gotten a lot better in terms of the way Docker runs. And if you're using this on Linux, you obviously would not have a lot of those problems too. So. That's my next plan is to switch to Linux again. So, all right. Were there any other questions? That's it for the demo. So, thank you.